Let's learn how to manipulate shaders via code in Unity. In the last video, we created this really cool dissolve shader in Shader Graph. If you want to learn how to make that, I'll put a link on the screen. But in this video, I'm going to show you how you would actually get this effect to work in your code and how you would go about changing some of the properties of this shader. In the last video, we made this float value called dissolve strength in our shader that controls the whole dissolve effect. But right now, it's not attached to any script or logic at all. So let's create a new script. I'm going to name mine Dissolver, and I'm going to show you how to grab these values from your shader. So our basic logic is going to be when we press the spacebar, change the dissolve strength. If this were in a real game, you would add this to your existing game's logic, something like when NPC health is less than zero, change the dissolve strength. But for tutorial purposes, we're keeping it simple. Before we jump into code, in order to grab any value from a shader, it needs to be converted into a property. And if we click on our property, we can see how to properly reference this in code. You can change the names of your properties and your references, but by default, it's going to be the name and adding an underscore right before it. To recap, our float value dissolve strength is on a range from zero to one. Zero being it has no dissolve applied and one being it has completely dissolved. So if we create a function that simply swaps out zero to one, I'll show you what it does. The object completely disappears and skips over the transition completely. So what we really need to do is gradually shift the strength from zero to one on command. So instead of just swapping out zero for one, we need to tell Unity that we want to gradually climb all of the numbers in between zero and one. Now, without creating any crazy math formulas here, we can utilize something called linear interpolation or lerp. So now we know our two points. So the last thing we need to know is the rate at which we want this to function, which is time. But for our computer counterparts, their version of time is frames. And if you need a function to run over several frames, you have two main options. You can put this in the update method, which runs every frame, or you can put this in a coroutine, which has the ability to run until a specific condition is met. The better practice here is going to be the coroutine. It's simply not necessary to have Unity checking for this script all of the time. And secondly, the update method runs the code inside of it every frame, whereas coroutines actually give you the ability to run the same function across multiple frames, which is what we're going for here. So back to the code, let's start fresh. First, I want to create a float variable for the duration that I want this effect to run at. And second, I'm going to create another float variable to control the dissolve strength. Now we're going to create the meat of the coroutine, and we do that by creating an IE numerator method. I'm going to name mine dissolver. I now need to create a couple of variables. Since we're running the dissolver over a period of time, I need a variable to keep track of how much time has passed, which I'm going to name elapsed time and initialize it at zero. I also need a way to access the material with the shader on it. However, I do not want to access the master material, if you will. I just need the material on this particular object. So I'm going to create a variable called dissolve material, and I'm going to set it equal to the material on this game object's renderer. The renderer is the thing that allows you to see the object and materials are a part of that. So that's why this works. And this will actually create an instance of this material at runtime. So I'm able to manipulate the values of this material and this material alone. Now for the actual coroutine logic, I want this to run until the duration that I've set is over. So I'm going to say while elapsed time is less than dissolve duration, run the following code. The first thing we need to do is keep track of how much time has passed. So we're going to set our elapsed time plus or equal to time dot delta time. Remember, this will be running continuously, so this number will be updating constantly until the condition is met. This is where we get to use lerp. Remember our floating value dissolve strength from earlier? Well, now we get to set it in code. So we're going to set dissolve strength equal to mathf.lerp. And lerp takes three values, the start value, the end value, and the time. So we're going to plug in our elapsed time variable here. And we're going to set elapsed time over dissolve duration so that no matter what we set the duration as, the dissolve transition always happens at the same rate. And this is just for the math for setting the dissolve strength over time. To actually connect this to our shader value, we need to access our dissolve material set its float value, and set float takes two values, 
The first being the reference we're trying to change, and the second being what we want the value to be. And lastly, since this is a coroutine, we need to have a yield statement in here. Without the yield statement, Unity would just run this entire code in one frame. So adding the yield statement lets Unity know where to pause and pick up the function from one frame to the next. There are several different yield statements, but yield return null basically just tells Unity to continue in the next frame. You can have a yield statement where you ask it to wait for a few seconds before continuing, but that wouldn't make sense for us here. Now to actually use this coroutine, I need to create another function and I'm going to name it start dissolver. And in it, I'm going to call start coroutine and inside of that, dissolver. Now for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm just going to check for an input on the spacebar. I do need to put this inside of the update method so that we're checking for inputs constantly. And if the spacebar is pressed, I'm going to call the start dissolver method that we just created. If we go back to Unity, we can see that our dissolve shader is working beautifully when I press the spacebar now. And if we go into focus mode, we can see that our dissolve strength is lerping as it should. Now this is super cool, but did you know that you can lerp colors as well? To do this, we need to repeat the same process as earlier. So I'm going to go into my dissolve shader. Right now I have the color set here, but I'm going to add a new color node attach it to the base color node and then turn that into a property so that I can reference this in code. If we now go back to our script, we can create two public color variables that we can control in the Unity editor. For lerp, we'll need two values, a start value and an end value. So I'm creating two variables, start color and end color. In our coroutine, we will also need to create a new color variable to keep track of the in-between color between the start and the end colors. So I'm going to call this lerped color. Lerping a color is similar to lerping a float. So if I set lerped color to color.lerp, it also takes three values, the start value, the end value, and then the time. For the time, since we've already done the math for this, I'm just going to plug in the dissolve strength. Now to actually set this value back to the shader, I need to reference the property I created earlier, color. So I'm going to say dissolve material dot set color, put in my reference, and then what I want it to be, which is the lerped color. Now if we save this and go back to Unity, we can now see that we have two new color values in our dissolver script that we're able to set on our own using the same shader. Let's set them to some cool things and see if this works. I haven't quite figured out the formula to get the coolest lerped colors, but you can definitely see the potential here. Only other thing I should mention here is that using this technique, we're technically generating a new material when we press the spacebar, which is fine to do using URP, but if you create a new material, you are in charge of its lifespan. And even if you destroy the game object that has the material on it, you're not technically destroying the material. So if you do decide you want to destroy the game object, say it's an enemy or something, also put a line in your code to destroy the material. It's not a huge deal as Unity gets rid of these every time a new scene loads, but just thought I would mention it. And that, my friends, is how to change shader values in code using lerp and coroutines. I hope this was helpful and I'll see you in the next one.